I'm Father Michael Joseph of St. Therese, and I'm recording this video from Avila, Spain, in the Hermitage of St. Joseph, here in CITES, the International Theresian and San Juan Center. I've had the privilege of being able to spend this whole year dedicated to the study of our great Carmelite founders, St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. Avila is the city where St. Teresa was born, where she discovered Carmel, and where she was inspired through the reception of deep mystical graces to found the Discalced Carmelites. Teresa walked these same streets. She looked at these same walls and enjoyed the surrounding scenery. Saints Teresa and John worked together at the convent of the Incarnation right here in Avila for several years when she was prioress and he was confessor. Their presence is constantly felt and remembered in the everyday life of Avila. As a young nun in Avila, Teresa discovered a father and a spiritual guide who would help her in her struggles to attain her intense desires for intimacy with God. This was St. Joseph. St. Joseph would eventually lead her to found her new Carmel of San Jose in Avila. And in her writings, St. Teresa would call him the patron of people who seek to grow in prayer. She teaches all of us who, like her, desire closeness with God to take St. Joseph as a father and a companion who will help us on the intense journey of the spiritual life. Now, St. Teresa is well known for her love for St. Joseph. In fact, many historians say that, that the great explosion of love and devotion for St. Joseph in the modern church was very much due to the life and writings of St. Teresa. She loved him for many reasons. For one, she received tremendous healing through his intercession. She knew intuitively that since he had such influence on Jesus during his earthly life, that his intercession would be similarly powerful in heaven. And it's very logical. If we seek the prayers of holy people that we know in this life, as we all do, we always ask them to pray for us, all the more than we would we seek the prayers of St. Joseph. Teresa writes about this in her autobiography. She says, because of my impressive experience of the goods this glorious saint obtains from God, I had the desire to persuade all to be devoted to him. I have not known anyone truly devoted to St. Joseph who has not advanced more in virtue. For in a powerful way, he benefits souls who recommend themselves to him. The Gospels teach us St. Joseph was an essential part of the divine plan for the Son of God to become a human in Jesus Christ. Joseph served this plan of God with all his strength. He fully gave himself in love to Jesus and Mary in a way which Teresa says deserves our appreciation and our meditation. She will say later in her autobiography, for I don't know how one can think about the queen of angels and about when she went through so much with the infant Jesus without giving thanks to St. Joseph for the good assistance he then provided them both with. Now we know there are no recorded words of Joseph in the gospels. He is seen as the example of a strong, silent presence. In silence, Joseph dealt with the difficulties surrounding Mary's pregnancy that he did not understand. And after receiving the divine word, he was saved from his doubts. And he spent the rest of his life united to Mary, silently serving and contemplating his divine child. This silent receptivity to the presence of God in Jesus that we see in St. Joseph is what Teresa wanted most for herself and for her spiritual children. Thus, her love for Joseph was not only because he answered her requests or obtained for her physical healing. Rather, Teresa saw him as a companion in her path of prayer. Her intimacy with God in contemplation was rooted totally in the sacred humanity of Christ and in faithfulness to his body, the church. And this was also the way of, spirit, of Saint Joseph. This was his spirituality. He too had a life of deep, silent prayer, always united to the presence of Jesus, nourishing and caring for him in all his needs, just like the body, the church. Because of this, Joseph is our model and our spiritual guide 
who makes sure we always stay on the right path in our prayer. St. Teresa says later in her autobiography, especially persons of prayer should always be attached to St. Joseph. Those who cannot find a master to teach them prayer should take this glorious saint for their master and they will not go astray. When St. Teresa was given the mission by our Lord, bring about a new Carmelite way of life in the church, this mission was to be consecrated to St. Joseph. She would name her first convent here in Avila after him and would put her whole reform of Carmel under his protection and patronage. One can say that Teresa was entirely consecrated to St. Joseph. And so for us, too, who seek to grow in our spiritual life, we can entrust ourselves to St. Joseph as the best guide on our own unique path to divine union. There's a great prayer written on the wall of this hermitage behind me that you can see here. It says, San Jose, dame tu silencio. St. Joseph, give me your silence. This is an awesome way to imitate and serve him in the spirit of St. Teresa. We can ask for his intercession for the grace of an inner silence, which listens for the will of God and which helps us serve quietly in love without trying to be noticed or to seek our own glory. This grace of silence will keep us united to Jesus through all the struggles of this life and gradually will transform us into Christ's very image. Again, it was here on these streets and surrounded by these walls of Avila that Teresa's Carmel was born and where she discovered St. Joseph as her father and patron, as the model and guide for all who seek to grow in union with God. He was there in Teresa's life from the beginning, bringing her great healing. He inspired her in the arduous work she would undertake as foundress and reformer. And he was the, sa the safeguard that her life of silent contemplation would always be rooted in the humanity of Christ and in faithfulness to the church. May we too be confident in St. Joseph's intercession that he will obtain everything we need. But especially let us ask him, St. Joseph, give me your silence. Give me your silence. For in the grace of interior silence is where we will be united to God in the midst of all life's struggles. And in this silence, with St. Joseph at our side, we will never go astray from Jesus and his church.